Hello and welcome to A Second Look. My name is Emmett McConnell. In this series, I break down the big plays and goals from a previous match in MLS. In this episode, I'm going to look back at the Philadelphia Union's 5-1 road victory against DC United. The Union had conceded four goals in three of its last four road matches, but this time turned the script at Audi Field. The Union amassed 16 first-half shots and did a really good job pressing in the midfield where they outnumbered DC 4-2. DC, meanwhile, wanted to exploit the wide areas where they had the advantage. They're unable to do so and often got the ball clogged in the Union midfield. Going into halftime, the Union with a far superior team. And other than those 16 shots, went in with two goals and a man advantage after a Junior Moreno red card in the 40th minute. We're only going to look up until that point when both teams were at full strength. Let's take a second look. Let's start by pointing out the two DC midfielders on this play. Chris Durkin and Junior Moreno. The ball goes wide to Lucas Rodriguez, and we can see that the four Union midfielders are tight on the ball carrier and his possible outlets. Meanwhile, the DC midfield and forward lines are spread out, and only a few players are available as Rodriguez is pressed. The only real option now is to play it into Acosta, who is pressed by Harris Medunian, and he doesn't have a passing option available to him. The ball comes loose under this pressure and then is cleared away. That Union midfield 4 versus the DC midfield 2 meant that one of Lucho Acosta or Paul Areola had to drop deeper from a forward position, and one of Lucas Rodriguez or Leonardo Hara had to tuck in from a wide position. That meant that DC lost one of the advantages they had in offense, and by creating mismatches in the forward and wide areas. Let's take a quick look at where DC was able to get a mismatch in the forward area and get a 3v3 against the Philadelphia Union. In this clip, we'll see a rare instance of the DC front three getting into one of those 3v3 situations against the Union back line. Junior Moreno gets the loose ball, which didn't happen often as the Union were very good at clogging the middle in this match. And he was able to quickly play it ahead for Wayne Rooney, as now DC is in a 3v3 against the slower Union defense. And now came to the experience of Rillian Collin, who decides to give away an innocuous foul, which allows the Union to reset and get behind the ball. The Union conceded eight first half fouls, almost all of them tactical ones, to slow the DC United attack once they had gotten into a favorable position. In this next clip we're going to see it wasn't called a foul, and ends up leading to the Philadelphia Union's first goal. Andrew Wooten gives Donovan Pines a tug here, but Pines also overcommits on his shielding of the ball, and his own weight carries him backwards as Wooten goes around him. So I think it's reasonable that a foul wasn't called here. Now the Union break and have a 3v2 situation, and it's Marco Fabian who's the player unmarked in the box. This pass isn't progressive enough and should be here so that Fabian isn't forced to stop and the DC defenders don't have time to get back. It seems now that the play is dead, as DC has six players back in the box behind the ball. But DC had a problem this game of sitting too deep, and Bedoya gets the layoff and was invited to take an uncontested shot through the defense, and he places it perfectly off the inside of the post. DC United sitting too deep was a big factor in the Union amassing 16 shots in the first half. Players like Harris Medunian and Marco Fabian were inclined to take long-range shots, as the DC players were just too slow to close them down. DC center midfielders Chris Durkin and Junior Moreno opt to prevent a pass from being played in front of their defenders here, who aren't actually currently in a bad position to mark a cross. But they could probably release Durkin to step forward up to the top of the box. Ray Gaddis has the ball in a crossing position, but sends it back for the unmarked Harris Medunian. The two forwards, Acosta and Areola, don't realize that they need to support the midfield and are too slow to cover. Meanwhile, Durkin and the rest of the defense needs to be quicker and step up and push out of their own box. To prevent these long-range shots, the DC defense needs to be quicker to step out from deep areas and close down the shooter. Meanwhile, Areola and Acosta also need to understand their role in helping to support their own midfielders by covering the defensive midfield on the other side, Harris Medunian. I would have liked if DC took a couple more risks defensively and let their three defensive players engage in 1v1s against the Union's three attacking players, as opposed to relying on their own wingbacks and center mids to support them and give them cover. 
Here we see good shape from DC, but there's a massive gap right here. And the DC midfield doesn't identify their marks, and Alejandro Bedoya is wide open. Lucas Rodriguez isn't a defender. He's a winger. But he needs to understand that it's his role to step up into this space, and that his defenders behind him had the situation covered. By the time it gets to Bedoya, he has plenty of time to assess his options, and the DC defense now needs to scramble to get back into its shape and also pick up its marks. Bedoya opts to shoot from range again here, and though it's blocked and well done by the DC midfielders. DC made the stop, but this was a bigger symptom of how they were able to deal with Union attacks and read the next pass. In this next clip, we'll see how the Union made use of its extra players in the midfield, and how once they picked up the loose ball, they were quick to play it up to their three forwards and initiate a counterattack. Medunian picks up this loose ball after a bad pass from the DC midfield, and the Union have a 3v3 on their own once he plays it forward. Fabian takes a long shot because Steve Birnbaum has stepped off and wary of the incoming runner. But once again, DC was just not aggressive enough defensively to close the Union players and force them backwards. It probably wasn't the best decision from Fabian to take on the shot there, but we did see how the Union were able to pick up a lot of loose balls in the midfield through Medunian and then play the ball forward and initiate those counters. In this next one, we'll see another instance of DC clearing up the middle poorly. They needed to recognize that their best chance to get out was outlets down the wing through Areola, Acosta, and Rodriguez. In this next clip, we're going to see Leonardo O'Hara with the worst clearance of the game. He tries to find Wayne Rooney in the middle of the field, but ends up going straight to a Union midfielder. It's a terrible decision as DC tries to force it through the middle again. Carval gets the ball, and he plays a forward pass. And again, Steve Birnbaum is too far off of Bedoya, who has the invitation to shoot again. By the time the rebound comes out, DC is still sitting too deep in their own box, and doesn't make an effort to step out. It's the two center mids expect to do the chasing at the top of the box, and they make the block. Lastly, let's look at the play leading up to the DC red card. That actually comes off of a DC United corner kick, and they have to be better at not exposing themselves on their own attacking situations. It's a 2v1 now, and Junior Moreno actually manages to mark both Casper Shabilko and Marco Fabian fairly well, and gets a block on the pass, though as unlucky as it deflects behind him, and Shabilko is able to get onto the loose ball and draw the penalty. Union players could have spread out a bit wider to create more space for each other, and maybe Fabian shouldn't have tried to clip it back to Shabilko, but given that they were trying to keep this situation a 2v1 and not let DC get back into a defensive position, the direct run and pass can be forgiven, especially as it leads to a penalty and a red card. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you're interested in more videos like this, you can check out my channel, where I have a lot more videos where I break down MLS matches. Have a great day.